Everywhere you look these days, you see a new fancy way of drinking tea. People may have started drinking tea hundreds of years ago, but today they sprinkle their own little pizzazz on it. And now there is a thriving new tea scene. I mean, think about it. There is matcha, that electric green tea, lovingly called the espresso of teas. We have tea mixology, where tea is being added to cocktails, creating things like tea chinis. There's dessert tea, everything from macarons to scones. Kombucha, that nice fizzy fermented tea. Tea and food, there's bubble tea with those chewy tapioca pearls on the bottom. They're not my jam, but you get the point. All of this begs the question though, what exactly is tea? And what is it not? Hey, uppity people, this is Heather. I'm a student in the art of tea, and my mission is to spread information and inspiration, one cup of tea at a time. In this video, we're about to get real specific on what tea actually is. Although there is a lot of tea products out there, we're gonna talk about how you can know if what you're drinking is the real deal. Let's get into it. are countless types of tea products that are produced globally. They might look and taste different, but they are all made from the leaves of a versatile evergreen plant. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to my girl, Camellia. Camellia sinensis. One of the amazing things about this tea plant is its ability to adapt naturally to its environment, which is why tea cultivation is such a nuanced process. Teas taste different depending on the countries, regions, and even gardens that they come from. This refers to the tea's terroir, or the ecosystem in which the tea plant is grown. Y'all, this is why one of the bougiest parts of being a knowledgeable tea lover is knowing the origin of the tea. Now, in order to get teas from the garden to the teapot, there is a nuanced process of producing teas. It's not just plucking the leaves and drying them. It involves a series of steps, each of them equally important, which takes the leaves from the first stage of plucking to the finished product. The way that a tea is produced will dictate what type of tea it will be. And did you know there are actually six types of tea? There's white tea, green tea, yellow, oolong, black, and pu'er. But again, remember, all of these teas originate from the Camellia sinensis plant. While tea production is very nuanced, there is a fundamental concept to understand here, and that is the understanding of how tea gets from producers to consumers. Now, I wanna recognize here that to this day, there remains huge issues of justice and unfair labor practices for many of the farmers, the growers, the pickers, and the packers of tea. Oftentimes, these individuals pick tea by hand and often, they're women and on the lowest rungs of the economic ladder. Now, fortunately, there are many efforts to remedy these types of practices because I'm sure you've seen some of those fair trade labels on some tea boxes and whatnot. But honestly, y'all, there's a lot of work that remains in this category. And most of this treatment dates all the way back to tea's colonial past. Let me tell you, if you want to spark a lively conversation with a tea retailer, Ask them how they source their teas. But that's for another conversation. Okay, back to the six categories of tea. Notice what's not on this list. Herbal teas. In the official tea world, herbal teas are called tisans. And contrary to popular belief, not all herbal tea beverages can be categorized as tea. Tazans are often called herbal teas, but they are not made from the Camellia sinensis plant. So they're not really tea in the strictest sense. 
Tizans use parts of various other plants, including bark, stems, roots, flowers, seeds, fruit, and the leaves to make infusions. And Tizans include things like red bush tea or rooibos tea from South Africa, yerba mate tea from South America. Tizans in particular often have wonderful healing characteristics and have been used in traditional Chinese medicine and Indian Ayurvedic medicine for centuries. These wellness blends and mixtures, they help to detox, calm, relax, induce sleep, or treat cold and flu symptoms. Now, here's one other benefit about Tizans. Other than yerba mate, all of these non-teas that people like to call teas are caffeine free. However, as I will remind you today, tomorrow, and in every video in perpetuity, the loose leaf variety is typically the best variety of tea. Tea bags are not necessarily bad. They offer convenience and an element of accessibility to those who are just casual tea drinkers. Trust me y'all, there is enough elitism in the tea world and that's not what I want to promote here. However, I will say this, if you truly want to get into the complexity and nuance that teas and tea adjacent beverages have, like Tizans, loose leaf tea will help you take your tea game to the next level. We'll talk about why that is in the next video. So look in the cupboard and tell me what kind of teas you see. Are they actually teas? Let me know here in the comments if you were previously aware of the six categories of tea, and if so, which ones do you like the most?